Okay, uh, welcome again, everyone. So today we will be talking about referencing and referencing softwares, which I think is a nightmare for everyone who is in academia, uh, whether it's gathering or searching for articles, um, knowing how to use the softwares, transferring the references to Word or whatever document that we are using. And it's quite a privilege that we have someone here today who is going to be helping us with all that. Um, so today's presenter is Prof. Tet. Uh, Prof, how do I pronounce your surname? Devro. Devroop. Devroop, yes. Yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> African. It's Dev Roop. Okay, Dev Roop. So Prof Chats is actually a professor of music technology who makes uh, who is responsible for making music for TV adverts, <laughs> soundtracks, um, he records CDs and DVDs and broadcasting. So if anything goes wrong, um, we can actually blame him. So he's going to be taking us through referencing softwares today please feel free to ask questions in the chat or you can raise your hand at any time i'm sure you'll be able to attend to that you can also use the reactions uh, but in the meantime can we all please switch off our cameras and pay attention to whatever he has to say prof please take over thank you very much thank you Mpoy. just so that you can get a picture as to, to uh, put a face to the voice not that it's a very good picture. You're looking at somebody who served his, uh, his sentence in academia for many years. So I think it's true what uh, Empoy had mentioned in the introduction. Referencing and references can be quite a nightmare when working uh, in, um, in academia, particularly for your publishing, your work, whatever work you do. So part of my task today is to try to ease this nightmare uh, to sort of bring you to a level where you can understand how it works, what's, it, what's the purpose behind it, and to make your tasks a bit easier. Uh, I just want to add that um, you need to keep in mind, uh, just an hour session like this will not be able to do justice to such a broad topic. The topic is a very broad topic. I can spend quite a lot of time just dealing with referencing alone. And that's apart from the referencing software, which is the second part to my talk. I think one needs to be very clear. It's a very, very broad, very broad topic. And uh, so all that we are going to be doing today is just to scratch the surface so that most of you would feel much more comfortable, hopefully at the end of the session, to sort of uh, not see referencing as something that is daunting or something that is challenging. And um, this is quite a significant part of the work that we do in academia. So it's something that um, you need to be, you need to have a handle on it uh, because there are several variants in the way people do things, but it's quite important for us because uh, as I will demonstrate in today's lecture, you will find the reasons for why referencing is so important. So essentially my talk is gonna be delivered in three parts, three parts. The first part, I will be speaking a little bit about referencing, and then I'll be talking about a specific software that I'm you that I use. It, you don't have to use the software; it's one that I use. But I think if you understand the principles behind the software, you can work with any similar software that does uh, the job that I do. I will give you the reasons as to why I use this uh, particular piece of software. And um, yeah, please, I do not want this to be seen as me punting for a specific brand of software. I'm not being paid by the software company or I'm not getting any kickbacks for it. Uh, I want to declare that upfront. It's just that I have found having used several of these so-called uh, tools, software tools, I just find the one that uh, I'm using at the moment uh, tends to satisfy all of my needs and I will come to the reasons why. Okay, the last part of my presentation will deal directly with uh, a hands-on approach. In other words, I will give you an example as to how this is done, how I would use it in that context. So we have three parts. First part, referencing in general. Second part, I will be dealing with the software, what happens to it. Third part, I will be giving you the practical stuff that you actually need. I think that's the part that you're really quite eager to, to get into, but I need to go through these steps first so that you can be clear. Okay, so let me start by sharing my screen 
And uh, I will just need employee to let me know if you can all see my screen. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be. Yes, quite Prof, we can see referencing and referencing software is a terror. Yes. Thank you. There we go. There we go. Okay, it's good to know that a health science student can read clearly. Referencing and referencing software, Zotero. Okay, so that's my name. If you need to get in touch with me, uh, my details will come up here now. That's my details. I'm in the School of Arts uh, on, on the Howard College campus. And as Mpoy pointed out, I come from a creative discipline. And she was very curious in the introduction, you know, how is it I made my way to academia? And so I find that. Uh, if one starts to look at the creative disciplines, particularly the arts, the arts in general, broadly speaking, you will pick up a lot of these creative things. And this is what helps you in your own work, whether you are in the health sciences or medical sciences or natural sciences, whatever sciences you are, it just helps you with your uh, with an aspect of creativity. It forces you to sort of think outside of convention, to use the catchphrase, to think outside the box. That's what people talk about. Out of the box, we're not referring here to the box that we'll all finally end up in, but we're talking about out of the box, the, our normal frame of reference that we're talking about. Okay, so we're dealing with software. So this session, what are you going to learn in this session? What are the things we're going to be covering? Firstly, I will talk a little bit about general matters of referencing. Then I will be talking about uh, reference management tools then how to download and install Zotero or install a software that you're going to be using to create an account on it. If you want an account, this is really not compulsory, to how you will add a citation from a database, how you add it from Google Scholar, that is, the insertion of a citation into MS Word. And I'm sorry, I'm just assuming here that all of you are using MS Word as your word processing software for your work. Now, I do understand some people use Shrivener, some people use Vellum, some people use Latex. Those are other softwares which are available for writing your thesis, they just as, just as good, but most people tend to default to MS Word for some reason. My personal experience, MS Word is uh, ranks as one of the last choices I would use to write up a dissertation uh, for personal reasons. It's just very cumbersome. It is not very user-friendly to me, uh, like most of the Microsoft products. I just find them not user-friendly. Coming from an arts base, there are other pro products that I find a bit more appealing, but this is not punting for any software, or this is not my lecture to be critical of other software. And finally, some tips on organizing your citations and your collections. So that's pretty much what we're going to be covering today in the hour that we have. I'm going to try to allocate some time for uh, questions at the end. So at the moment, when you start out your research, whether you're writing a research paper or whether you're doing a thesis uh, or any kind of academic work, most of you will be probably feeling like this. This is what you're feeling like. You've got a search engine, you've got libraries, you've got ResearchGate, Academia, they did, you probably got Scopus, Web of Science, you've got databases, you've got UKZ and Con, open, and you might be just feeling overwhelmed. It's like, what on earth do I do with all of this information? There's just so much that is out there. Where do I start? How do I actually go about this? And that is the problem that Mpoy had referred to in the introduction. This is what makes referencing so difficult and so complicated and also quite frustrating for many people. So firstly, we need to understand why do we reference? Why do we need to reference in the first place? This is quite important for us. So we reference because it credits other people. It gives credit to individuals who've done similar work before you because we are building on scholars or, or scholarship that had actually went before us. And it also adds credibility to the work that you are doing showing that you use certain valid sources of information. You didn't just come at this from an opinion or your own way of thinking. So you came from a base of knowledge that is reliable. Then, sorry, I noticed that somebody's microphone is on. If you may just please mute yourself so that it doesn't disturb others. Otherwise I will be forced to ask uh, the host to silence you on this platform. Okay, the next one to help to show how your work is related to previous work, to show where do you fit in? How do you blend in with work that has gone before you? The next, which is quite a serious issue, the issue of plagiarism. Now I'm not gonna go into a whole detail of plagiarism. Plagiarism is basically using somebody else's work and passing it off as yours, whether unknowingly or knowingly. Plagiarism, in other words, if I take something, if I say, you know, South Africa is a rainbow nation, those are not Devroop's words. Those are the words of Bishop Archbishop Desmond Tutu. So I need to reference it according to 
uh, Arch, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, South Africa is a rainbow nation. So there we go. I've not stolen that. So I can't steal it. It's not free in the public domain, uh, so to speak. Then it's also to help readers to understand the context and to find further information in the field. And uh, the final point that I have here for references to fulfill their function, that is, they must be accurate. So that's probably the reasons why we get on with referencing. So now, where does your challenge start as a student or as a researcher? Firstly, you're going to have a research topic, which is the part highlighted in blue here, a research topic, and you need to generate some kind of thesis or some kind of paper that's going to come out of this. Now, with your challenge, you're going to have a whole host of sources. You're going to have research articles, you're going to have books, you're going to have conference papers, you're going to have dissertations, you're going to have uh, blogs, you're going to have websites, you're going to have YouTube. There's a whole ton of material that you're going to have available to you, digital sources and also analog as well as hard copy sources, a whole lot of them. You need to filter through stuff and they're going to manifest themselves in two ways, two ways in your research. They firstly got to manifest themselves as a citation where you're going to refer to somebody as having said something like I did earlier. And you're going to have to then generate a list of references in your bibliography. You, you're going to referencing the text that you'd actually use. Now, I don't know how it works in your discipline in the health sciences. However, coming from the social sciences, it is common practice. We have two types of referencing. The one type is sources that we've consulted and the other is sources that we actually reference. In other words, you might have read a lot of books, but you're not citing them in your thesis, but you use them to shape your argument. And then you might have those sources that you actually use where you're using citation. So I'm not so sure how it works in your health sciences. I guess the best people to ask here are your supervisors. Find out what is uh, the state of play in your discipline. You might just want to cite them. So those are the two critical things in your challenge. To take all of this information, to be able to cite them in your paper and to generate a bibliography. Now that's quite important for you. So this is where the problem comes in. And this is where the nightmare uh, comes in, which Empoy had spoken to. Here you have lots of typing errors, lots of referencing mistakes, there's tons of mistakes of all sorts, punctuation, spelling, wrong formatting, wrong date, publication dates, wrong publisher, two old sources, a whole host of problems just creep in here. This is where the problem comes in. And this presents a challenge for you as a researcher. So that's the challenge. And we are hoping to overcome that. So how do we overcome that? How do we overcome this, this challenge of trying to be accurate in a world or in a sea of information? So I listed for you here in this particular diagram, the one assistance you can have is what we call a reference management Tool, a tool or what I'm calling it an app or a piece of software that's going to allow you to be able to bring together all of these different components, bring together your articles, your books, your conference papers, your dissertation, bring them all together into one place. And from there, you can now start to cite or you can reference them. So the example I'm going to be using today to demonstrate this to you is the one that I use called Zotero. It is called Zotero. This is quite a, uh, a newish platform. However, you need to keep in mind that there are tons of reference tools out there. Zotero is just one of them. You might have heard of things called Mendeley. You might have heard of things called EndNote, which is widely used at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. EndNote is a very popular piece of software used by most students. Um, and um, they have... Uh, their marketing strategy says bibliography is made easy. I would also say we need to have something that makes citations as well a bit easier, not just the bibliography, but I think uh, they are well intended. So we have RefWorks, Cite You Like, or Cite As You Write, Quicker, BibMe, a whole host of them. Do keep in mind, do keep in mind, if you are not using any of these software, you can still perform this function using the site as you write in MS Word. MS Word has a feature built into it. Yeah, it is an aspect of, it is a plugin function, site as you write. So even if you're not using any of these pieces of software, you can still do this comfortably within MS Word. So keep that in mind. Now, 
Why do we use a reference management tool? Why? What's the point? Firstly, it helps you to manage your bibliographic source so you can manage them much more effectively for your referencing. It also integrates with your word processor. It's talking to your word processor. It's a kind of carrier. You know, it's a kind of carrier that we have for your word process. So pretty much like most of you are, you will find there are certain people who are just carriers in our society. They will receive a WhatsApp message from one person and they will forward it to the next person. So they are like a forwarding agent all the time. That's what we have here. Similarly, so we have this platform to allow you to integrate your word process. It also generates in-text citations. It generates the citations for you. It saves the bibliographic data and information sources. It is very easy to switch between your different citation styles. Now, I'm not so sure how familiar you are with the different citation styles. And this is dependent on the types of journals you're writing or the kind of uh, formatting that's required for the university. We have different styles like APA. The, uh, we have the Harvard. We have Chicago. We have Turabian. We have a whole host of styles that are available. Now, if you had done your text in one particular style. Let's say you use APA for your work. And if the journal that you're submitting it to has rejected it and your article, and now you're going to send it to another journal and they will tell you, well, we don't use APA, we use Chicago. So this piece of software, it's very easy. It allows you just with a switch of a button to simply change all of that into Chicago. It saves you hours and hours of retyping. That's what it does. Also, it has a sync save function. That's a synchronization function, <clears throat> which references across multiple platforms. That is your mobile phone, your iPad, uh, computers that are available, or whatever other digital apparatus you might be using. It allows you to sync between them. Now, I can't go through every single function. It's going to take me a long time to do that. I will try to just skim through some of them. So why do I use Zotero? Firstly, remember, I'm coming from a creative discipline creative discipline. And like most of us seated here, with the exception of some medical doctors, when we joined academia, we took our vow of poverty, which means we got no money. We want things for free. So Zotero is free. That's the big perk that we have. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. So, and it is always uh, updated. It's available on many platforms, on operating systems. It's available on Mac. It's available on Windows, on Linux. It's open source software, beautiful to work, works on any platform. That's fine. That's perfect for me. It's very easy to learn, as you will discover today. It's quite a simple software to get around, to get you around. There's tons of videos available on YouTube. A lot of people are using this software. It's quite a hip piece of software to use. Uh, there's constant updates. And for me, I just find that uh, in the field that I work, which is music, I do a lot of stuff in music and in uh, film because that's my close relationship to uh, the close relationship between music and moving images. I find that to cite like film material, graphics, pictures, it makes it very easy when I'm using Zotero. To reference them, it's very, very easy to do that. It makes my life very easy. And you might find that also coming from the health sciences, I'm assuming most of you are from the health sciences here, you will probably have figures, diagrams, images that you just want to cite and reference. It makes your task very easy. So I just find for these reasons, Zotero for me works well. So now let's move over onto how does a reference management tool work? How does this thing work? What is happening with this tool? You need to first understand the mechanics behind it before you start to use it. So remember, Zotero is a kind of interpreter, interpreter between what is available in your sources on your web browser, like Safari or Firefox or Chrome or Opera or Internet Explorer. Those are your browsers that you have. It serves as a kind of communication tool to take stuff from there. It brings it into Zotero. It keeps it there temporarily. And then you can move it into your MS Word. So you need to keep this in mind. Now, because we have this relationship between your browser on the one hand, your interpreter, which is Zotero or your packaging, your bank, and that moves into MS Word. What this means for you essentially is that when you are working, all three of these pieces of software should be open at all times, all three of them. 
well, maybe not so much with the last one with MS Word. When you upload MS Word, it will come in there automatic. So these three pieces of software need to be open. So when you are opening up Zotero, I would always start my computer by opening up Zotero first. When that's the first piece of software open, Zotero. Once Zotero is open, then when you go into your browser, it automatically links. When you open up your MS Word, it automatically links. You don't have to go and click it to open. You don't have to go into your browser and say, please open Zotero. No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go into MS Word and say, please open Zotero. No, it opens automatically. It's got what we call a connector when we actually install it. So you need to have this image in your mind. We have our browsers at the top where we search or we browse for our information on the on the web or in cyberspace, that will bring all of that information into Zotero. Zotero is like your kind of sorting machine. You'll sort the information for you, put get all your data sorted out in it, catalog it for you, get it in a nice format. All the dirty work that you as a scholar have to do, Zotero is doing it for you. So Zotero is like your kind of research assistant. It's like your assistant. It's helping you to do all that dirty stuff and the stuff that's going to take you a lot of time to do, it does it for you. And it packages it in a way and it keeps it ready. The moment you need to use it, you simply link it to MS Word and there you go. You are up and running. Makes it easy. So I have to repeat. I've said this twice already for the third time. When you are working with a reference management tool, ensure that you first open the reference management tool, Zotero, or if you're using EndNote or you're using BibText, whichever one, make sure you open that first. Then you open up your browser and then your browser links, and then you open up your MS Word that you're working with, and they all speak to each another. You don't have to physically open it in the last two. They do so automatically. So this is going to be a quick slide. I'm not going to waste too much of time because I'm assuming here that most of you are computer literate, uh, that you are have the ability to download and load software. So your first task is to download Zotero. Your first task is to download. For those of you who don't have it, I've got this here on the slide. You will go step one, go to Zotero.org or EndNote.org, whatever you're using, and just download. Click download. It's going to open up a page like the one you see in front of you here. This is Zotero 5.0. We are now on five point, sorry, we are on Zotero 6.02. So we are quite updated with our version for Zotero. As you can see, it changes all the time. Every five, six months, you will find your machine will come up and say, you need to update Zotero and it'll do it automatically for you. Just say yes, and automatically it gets done. It saves all your information. It doesn't erase anything. So don't be afraid when you're updating. It will just simply save everything and transfer it for you. So first part is to go to Zotero. I don't know if you can see my, my mouse here. And Poi, please let me know if you can see my mouse. You here will go to Zotero.org and you download the software. I can you see download. the mouse, the mouse Thank you. pointer. Thank you. Okay, so you download it, download it. Then you will, it'll take you to this page, which is a Zotero step. You click download here. You download it for Windows or for Mac or for Linux, whatever you're using, down, click on the download. You do that. Now, the next part is quite important. You will now go and install a connector. See, it says connector. Your incomplete, your installation is not complete up until you downloaded your connector. The connector allows you to connect. It's what it does. It's connecting your browser to Zotero. It's the connection that you're putting. Okay. It's like when you get married, you put a ring on each another's finger. That's a connection that you are married and you are tied for life. So your suffering starts at that moment, the moment you put that ring on. There you go. So this connector connects both your browser and that. So you need two parts here. Remember the installation. First, you will download the software, Zotero, download it, install it, and you will install the connector, okay? And these things are fairly self-explanatory on a YouTube video or even in your quick start guide. There's a quick start guide to Zotero. It tells you quickly how to do this. You can go in and simply do this. I don't have time to do that for you. I would have loved to have done it for you. But if you have any difficulties, ask one of your colleagues or simply drop me a message and maybe we can through Colleen or your school, I can show you how to install. But it's nothing difficult, quite a straightforward thing. Install, it'll install, it'll unpack it for you. Install your connector, it does the connector, boom, and you're done. Once you are done, yeah, I've got right at the top, the quick start guide. The quick start guide will help you to go through anything. Now, if you look at your task bar, your task bar on your computer, 
This is what my taskbar looks like on my computer. By the taskbar, I mean this bar right at the bottom. What right at the bottom? You will see I've got a whole lot of software that's available here, but my Microsoft Word is here. That's my Word document. And then I have my Zotero. This has got this big Z sign. So please, I know we are in the Z brigade in KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, we've got Zandile, we've got Zuma, we've got a whole lot of Zs in KwaZulu-Natal. Now you have Zotero there as well. So you have your Zotero, which is linked, and I'm using Firefox as my browser. I just use Firefox. I know I've just heard from a very close colleague of mine that most of you do use Chrome. So if you're using Chrome, that's also fine. It works, no problem. You can go ahead and use Chrome right? or any of the other browsers. I just find Firefox the easiest for me to use. So that's where you find them. Then if you go onto your browser, when you click on your browser, yeah, your browser, I will show you this later. When you click on your browser, where do you find it? If you're clicking on Chrome, if you look right at the top here, it's got a yellow folder. There's a yellow folder there. That's your Zotero folder. It doesn't have the big red Z. It simply has a yellow folder, which tells you, ah, that Zotero link is there. Or Firefox, same thing, the folder, you know, ah, Zotero is there. Safari, if you're using, this is the browser for Apple Macs. It's got a, doesn't have a yellow folder, it's got a gray folder here. So that's where you will find it. If you go into your browser, you will always, if it's not there, it means you've not installed the connector. I repeat, if it's not there, you have not installed the connector. So you've got to install the connector. So it goes and this restart your machine and it will automatically load it for you. So that's your browser. So when you're using MS Word, where do we find it in MS Word? Very easy in MS Word. If you look at your toolbar in MS Word, right at the top, you will find Zotero will appear. That's in MS Word. So you can see Zotero is there and uh, you have now found the software that you're using. If you are using EndNote, it'll be EndNote. If you're using BibText, it'll be BibTeX. Whatever you're using, it'll be there. So for now, I'm just going to be talking about Zotero. I'm not going to be referencing the other pieces of software. So let's go into the meat, so to speak. If you're vegetarian, I'm sorry about that, but we're going into the meat of the presentation right now. Okay, for you, maybe it could be a soya chunk that you're having. Okay, using Zotero to collect, manage, and cite your reference. We're using Zotero, we're using the management tool to be able to collect information, to be able to manage it properly, and to be able to cite it in our research. That's what we're doing. That's our function. Here. So when I open up Zotero, if I open it up, that's what I'm going to see. If I double click on it, if I double click on it, that's what you're going to see. It looks fairly daunting, not with all these, um, these bubbles that you see, the text bubbles. When I say text bubbles, I mean this thing here that says library, this thing that says resources, this is a call out from step one, step two, whatever metadata. Don't worry about that. This is what you're gonna see in the background. This is your big Zotero interface, this big square with the red lines. So your step one will be to double click Zotero, which is in your menu bar, double click it to open it. When you open it, the page is gonna open like this. Yours will probably be blank. This section here deals with your libraries, all your libraries. In other words, what is your library? Your library is pretty much like books on a shelf. Books on a shelf could be equal to each book is a topic for a different theme, or you could have different articles here. You might have an article on <clears throat> the war in Ukraine, an article on COVID, an article on ivermectin, an article on the rain in KwaZulu-Natal. So you can be writing different articles. That will all be in your library. You can create this library. So this is the library that's going to collect everything to do with rain in Durban, or this one deals with everything to do with the war in Ukraine. Those are your libraries. Now here in the middle, this middle section, these are your resources. In other words, whether it's your article, your blog, your newspaper cutting, an audio clip, a video, your YouTube video, all of that stuff will be here. That'll be in the middle. All of that will be stored, then you can see that. Now, what do we have on our right-hand side? This is the nice part about it. On the right-hand side, we have what we call our metadata. Metadata, which means the added data that's related directly to your article. So in other words, if you have an article here, you, I know you all can't see this, it's called design thinking, that article. So because that's highlighted here, it's highlighted, all the metadata related to that article, who's the author, 
Where was it published? What was the date? Was there an abstract? What's its series number? What's the volume number? When was the date it was authored? Who are the publishers? What's the full title of the work? Where is it a book? Is it a journal? All of that stuff will come in automatically. Automatically is the word. Automatic. You don't have to put it in. Zotero does that for you. It's your slave. The moment you brought the article in, bang, it'll appear there immediately. Now, that's our problem. That's our problem because there isn't a technology in the world that is perfect. It's not perfect. So your task as a student is to go and to ensure that whatever has been entered here on the right hand side, your metadata, whatever has been entered here is correct. Don't simply import it and think, ah, Zotero did it, it must be perfect. No, you have to go and control it. You have to go and control it. Now, I'm pretty sure, I'm going to talk on a side here, not so much here. How many of you here have sent a WhatsApp message or a WhatsApp text message using intelligent text? And after you sent it, you realize, oh, there were certain words that were incorrect. And you realize, oh my God, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said step. I should have said slip or something like that. And you'd find, ah, it is already gone. So you have to control this. Remember, go to the metadata. It'll take you one minute. Just correct this thing, make sure everything is correct, then we move ahead. Okay, so that's all that Zotero does for you. Beautiful piece of software. <clears throat> it creates your library where you can create your different articles or your, you might just have one. Most of you will be working on a thesis. So you're not gonna be having a whole lot of articles. You're just gonna have your thesis here. That's it, my thesis. <clears throat> okay, that's the only thing you're gonna have. You will put all your articles here articles, referencing, blogs, theses, all of that stuff will be imported here. And the metadata for each one will be here. That is all. That is all that Zotero does. But it manages it very effectively for you. Now, that's pretty much what we have. So this is going to look fairly daunting. Do not be afraid. I've got this slide. By the way, my entire presentation is what I call a mashup. I don't know if you are familiar with mashups. Mashups are a new kind of music composition where we take bits and pieces from other songs and we make up our own song. That's what I did. I took bits and pieces from other people's presentation and I made up some stuff of my own and I put it together. So I mashed this up. That's what I have. So this is coming from a presentation by somebody else. A lot, some of the stuff you will find, you will see it somewhere else. So I don't claim authenticity to everything here, but the idea is mine, but I've borrowed ideas from other people. So it's a mashup for you. Okay, this explains to you in detail, in detail, what Zotero is doing. As you can see, here's my first section, my library, my collection contents. Here's my content. These are all my different articles. Here we go. This is my metadata. These are my metadata. So as you can see here, I will explain to, to you some of these things here now before we go on. So here I've got an article selected here, the one in blue, it's highlighted here. It's called Using Wikipedia to Teach Information Literacy by Jennings. Now, this is the metadata for this article here. On the right-hand side, that's my metadata. It tells me it's a journal article, the title was that, the author was Jennings, the abstract is available, the publication is there, it's volume 15, issue four, pages that, this is the date of publication, this is the DOI number, the ISS, so you see all this metadata, metadata for this article comes in here automatically. You don't have to go and do that. When I did my master's and my PhD, I had to physically go and put every single item here on your right-hand side, every single item. I had to punch it in manually and there were always errors. Okay, you are lucky it gets done for you. Thanks to Zotero, thanks to EndNote, thanks to all the other software. So this is pretty much it. I'm not going to go into detail with each of these things. That's sort of self-explanatory, and you can do that today. I don't have the time to go into all of that. So what do we do when we got an article, you're looking for something? Now, these are the steps. If you're working with Google Scholar, Google Scholar, I think most of you are working with Google Scholar, you will go into Google Scholar, and in your search space, you will punch in what you're looking for, design thinking, for example. You'll punch in design thinking and you'll simply hit open and it'll open up several articles, the citations here of several articles that you have, okay, on this. 
Step three, you will select your format that you want. What format? APA, MLA, Chicago, simply there. Step four, you just import it into your reference. You just say import and it's there. Now, here's the cool thing about using Google Scholar. Sorry, I'm diverting here. When you go on to cited, you can see it says cited by 219 to 2000 people have cited this. You can now get references to similar articles of the nature. So you don't have to search widely. If you go on to one article, you get links to a whole host of other articles. And if you look on the extreme left, right left-hand corner here on Google Scholar, it tells you which is the most current articles, 2018, 2017, 2014. So this is one of the issues we have. If you're looking for an article, go for the most current year that you have. But that's a different story altogether. So that's looking at Google Scholar, and these are the articles. So let's have a look at an example. This is a beautiful example that you have here, which has been done for you. So let's look at our Google Scholar. This is Google right at the top, the red mark. There we go. Zotero is active. There we go. Can you see that? That's there. It's active. Now, we are looking for something on music and medicine. We want to find all the articles. So when we punch this into Google Scholar, these are the various hits that we are getting on music and medicine. These are the various hits. So once I have these hits, I will go back to where it says Google Scholar, and I will hit click on it. It will bring up this page here for me, the one in green, the one with the green bar. It tells me, can you see all these titles here, music and medicine, Music and Medicine, History of Music Therapy, Music and Medicine. There's the titles here again. Now, I simply tick the checkbox of the one I want, and I say, OK. This will automatically add it into my Zotero library. This is my Zotero library. So the moment I click here in my browser, OK, it will automatically ship this to my browser. OK, so that's what we have. Now, this is what you'll see in, your in Zotero. Here you have your library, which is the title of your thesis. You will, I will show you how we create this just now. This is the title of your work, whatever your thesis is called. It's there. There's the article that we just brought in. There's the metadata for that article. There we go. Okay, just to go back. Here we were. Music and medicine was the article. We selected it. There's the tick box. I selected it, music and medicine. I said, okay. It went to my library here in my library. And here's what happened. In my library, it brought the article in, music and medicine. Here's the author, the article, all the data came in automatically, done for me, dusted. Can you see? It saved you a lot of work just to do it this way. So to look at this now, if you want to add an item, by the way, this is in Zotero itself. I just want to go back. This is Zotero. Can you see the Z here? This is the software. This is Zotero itself. Now we look at my library, this bit here. Yours would be my thesis or my journal article or my whatever. Whatever you're doing. My library here, this is my, the title of your thesis. Okay, so we look at this. These are going to be all the articles in your library. There we go. We are in my library. <clears throat> you got all your publications. We can add to the collection. You can add a new article here. And you can give it a title. <clears throat> you can further create a folder, music and medicine. That's the title of the article. Now, that's the one way we can do that. Sorry. This is the one way of adding something new into it. I will be doing this for you practically just now in a moment. I just want you to register the broad thinking behind it. That's the way. Now, another way of adding stuff in is to go and add it by an identifier. Here we have this lovely tool. It's like a magic wand. This is a magic tool. If I click on this tool here, it's like a magic wand. If I click on this tool, that's what it's going to open up. It's opened up the base to allow you to enter stuff in only if you have the ISBN number, the DOI number, the pub PubMids number, or the ArcVis, or the IDs to your library. All you do here, oh, sorry. <coughs> All you do here is you simply punch in the number. 6543210112 and hit enter. It'll go and search the whole web for that article and import it into this for you. So you don't have to go and first search for the title. All you need is just the title. The ISBN number you'll find on the cover of any book. Simple and it brings it in. Now, the metadata, this page here, just so that you are not confused, I'm going to show you where it comes from. Okay. This is the metadata. See the metadata here? All this information here. 
is what we call the metadata. Okay. That's it again. This is my metadata. Here you can go now and you can manually fix things that are not right. The first name, the last name, the abstract, the series number, just in case sometimes you want to put this in on your own. If you've got a copy of an article where there is no digital copy available. Okay, you went to the library, you found a book in the library, there's no digital copy available. You now have to insert the information. <clears throat> okay, you can insert the information on your own. You can go and add it in here. Okay. That's pretty much Zotero in a, I wouldn't say nutshell, but I would say that's Zotero in a very brief hazel nutshell, very small insight into what Zotero can do. That's Zotero. Now we're done with Zotero. That's the work there. And now we move over onto MS Word, MS Word. Let's see what is happening in MS Word. What is going on with this thing in MS Word? Okay, in MS Word, here we go. When we open up our MS Word, our Google Docs, our Word or our Docs, we're going to find, ah, Zotero. There we go. This baby is here. There's Zotero. We got here, it says add citation, add bibliography. Now you can even go and edit this. You can go and double click on this and you can go and edit the citation or edit the bibliography with fresh preferences and so on. Okay. So when we add a citation like this, adding a citation, it's going to bring this up for you, this marks here. So you can see, we can punch it. There's the Z for Zotero. Punch in what it is. There you go. It's going to go and search it in your library. Bring it up and add citation. There you see it brings it in for you. I will show you how now, how that's done. I see we have 15 minutes left, so I'm going to try to. I'm almost done with my presentation, but we're going to move over. This brings us in here. There we go. There's my citation, and it's got my bibliography. Here's my bibliography. Add bibliography. Here's my bibliography. I will show you in a minute how we actually get to this. So that's the magic in MS Word. That's what it does for you. So you simply place your cursor on the bibliography and click add bibliography. It does it for you. And there you go. You're up and running. So to add your bibliography again, simply hit it here and it will generate it for you automatically. It creates the bibliography for you automatically. There you go with your referencing and that's your referencing taken from the bibliography. Okay, the final slide here. Please remember, I've spoken at great length about Zotero. This is the link, the university's link to EndNote. This is a link to EndNote, which is the free version that the university will give you as well. As students, you could use this. Okay, you could also use EndNote for the same purpose, or you could go to your library guide. Right, that's my presentation. So I conclude my presentation there. And what I would like to do now is first, allow you to ask any questions that you might have before I show you how I actually use Zotero. Are we fine, employee? Could you? Yes, uh, chat. We do have a compliment and a question in the chat. Um, here, the question is, how does Zotero differ from Mendeley? Uh, look, the kind of question you're asking is, how does a BMW differ from a Mercedes-Benz? They both pretty much do the same thing. A BMW might be a bit more fancier in terms of its buttons and its knobs and its switches, maybe go a little faster here on the corners. And Mercedes-Benz might be more luxurious and have better shock absorbers. They pretty much do the same thing. They pretty much do the same thing. So it's much over muchness. And I always say the best software in the world is the one that you use most often. That's the best one because you're most familiar with it. So I have, I've used Mendeley for years. I find it excellent. It works very well. However, there's been a problem recently with Mendeley. So I think that's something that's going to be a challenge for Mendeley to sort out. Good. Next. Okay. And then Nos another one. Yeah. Another one actually asks, how can I import my reference? How can I import my reference, my Microsoft Word to Zotero or EndNote? Oh, there um, you go. Okay. Yeah. On my slide, on my slide, there's actually a link. There's, I did provide a link on the slide, actually, how you can move all of your data from EndNote into Zotero. You can, it's quite simple. You just import, it imports all the, all the documents with it. Okay, so you don't have to worry, that's done for you. I just want to take you through one example to satisfy Velocity as to how this is done. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, okay. That would be nice. So, yes. now, okay, so let's say, for example, uh, let me see, share my screen again. Damn it, where is this thing? 
Uh, I'm sorry about this. Okay, can you see my screen that says Firefox? Hello? Yes, yes. yes we can right. see it. No. Let's say now, we are going to, Velocity, you and I are gonna write an article, we're writing a thesis on the war in Ukraine, okay? The war in Ukraine that's going on. So my first task would be to go up into Zotero. I've got it open here for you, Zotero. Can you see Zotero, my Zotero? Just yes. scream. Okay, there's Zotero. So Velocity, here's what I'm gonna do. On this plus button here, it says new collection. I will say new. I gotta give it a title. Let's say war in Ukraine. Got it? There's it. I've now created a folder. I've created a big folder that I'm gonna put all my articles, all my blogs, all my books, all my dissertations into it. There we go. Boom. Now you see war in Ukraine. There's it here. Nothing is in here. Can you see this? Absolutely nothing. Nada. No article is here. So now, Viloshni, what are we gonna do is we're gonna say. We want to find articles here on the war in Ukraine. Got it? We're trying to find an article. Oops, sorry. There we go. Searching for war in Ukraine. Now there's quite a ton of articles, as you can see. I just want to move this out of the way. Uh, what is this thing here? War in Ukraine. Can you see that? This is all my articles that I got from war in Ukraine. This is in Google Scholar. As you can see, there's my Zotero active here at the top. So now, Let's say you and I, Viloshni, discover that we want all these articles, one, two, three, four. They're all relevant. They're all relevant for our thesis. We need them all. So I will go on here at Zotero at the top and I will click Zotero. Now it's going to open up this floating page. Can you see this? Can you all see this? Yes. All right, now and you can see. Yes. So I said I wanted the first four. I'll click that one, that one, that one, that one. Now you can always go and read the article first before you click it. I will click on that and I will simply say, okay. See, I click them and I'm now gonna say, okay. There we go, it's saving, it's saving it too. Watch what's happening here. Saving to, saving to war in Ukraine. It's already talking to Zotero. Here's my Zotero, watch here. Watch what happened. Can you see what happened here? It brought all those articles directly in. Sup, there was nothing here previously. Absolutely nothing here. It took all these articles and simply brought them in. Now I'm done. I don't need this anymore. Close Google Scholar. Here's my articles all in Zotero. I can now go and double click on this. Boom. Ah, there we go. This is an article here by so-and-so. I can read the article. I can now go and highlight stuff on it. Sorry, I was going to use another word, but highlight stuff on it. All of I can highlight things on it, on the article, make my referencing, and then I'm done. So as you can see now, Viloshni, and for those of you who haven't, on each article here, I've got the metadata. I've got all the articles. There's all the stuff. There we go. Everything is there. Now you might, your question is, how do I get this into MS Word? Now I need to bring it to MS Word. Remember, we went to the web. We collected all the information. We put it in Zotero. Now it's in Zotero. Under my folder that says, war in Ukraine. War in Ukraine. Let's say I did another one. Oh, sorry. Let me finish this first. Okay. Now I move over onto my MS Word. MS Word. Here's MS Word. Okay, I've opened it up. There's my Zotero. It's there. Now I'm starting to cite. According to. Da, 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 so somebody here, whoever this person is, and I want to add my text here. I want to add a citation. The moment I click this here, watch here. I'm going to click this. Now it's going to tell me adding a citation. Can you see what happened here? Look at what happened to this red bugger. Now I can go and find out, okay, which article? I want to find out which article. This one, I want to say the article by, uh, who's this author here? Publix. So I'm just going to put his name. P U B. There's it. Here's his article. That's the one I want. Bradley. And I say, enter. There we go. Bradley is there. And then I continue writing for something else, and I'll add another citation in. So, oh, I want to put in another citation. I want the second article that was there. Uh, sorry, I needed this one here, the one written by uh, D-A-R-C, whatever the person's name is. Okay, so here I go, D-A-R-C, 
There's it. Ah, this person here, that's the one. Boom. There we go. Now I've got my article. You did it for me. Did it for me. Now we carry on with the article and we can keep going along like this. Keep adding stuff. You know, keep adding stuff. I want to add another one. Simply go and add citation. Somebody said something else. Who was this other person? Let's see. In here. Uh, roots of four. We want to write this author is Mary. Mary is saying something in his article that we need. So I'll just punch in here. M-E-R-R-Y. Mary R. Uh, roots. There we go. Add it in. Mary. There we go. Wood and Mary article is there with the year. Can you see? That's how I insert it. Now when I'm done, we're finished. We've finished our work. Now we now need to generate our bibliography. Bibliography, you've been asked to generate. Now we've finished with this. We want to cite this. All I do is I simply go back here where it says edit bibliography. You see here? Edit bibliography. And I will just say, that's it. Click on it. There we go. Done. Done. All your work is done for you. The whole thing is done. All you need to do as a student, don't be lazy. Go and just quickly double check if all these things are correct. Bradley.g. That's okay. Dark said that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, that's italics. That's fine. That's okay. That's okay. Yep, all there. Done. There you got your article all sorted. Filoshni, I hope that answers your question. Anybody else? Oh, yes, Prof. And uh, Tabisin just asked if there's a need to include the URL in the bibliography. Um, I do think that this one depends on the journal that you're, you're writing to. You are unless I'm of, wrong. Yes, no, the you are URL. right. Yeah, if yes. you got a URL, that's it. Now, you, you can put the URL also in. And I just wanted to demonstrate something for you here. Now, when we were here with this ISBN, let's say we went on to Google. Here, Google. This is Google. Huh? This is not Google Scholar. All right. Now, I'm going to say war in Ukraine. Book. I want to see who's written a book on this thing. Ah, there's some books here on it. Putin's war, Amazon. Okay, great. Now we got the book. Uh, we want to find out what is my, I just want to quickly try and find the ISBN number. This is the book. Sorry, I'm doing this very quickly. I know you're all rushing off, so. Ah, damn it. Bloody fool. Uh, I don't see. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I must also say that um, I think the 21st century URL is also the the DOI number. I think yeah. that's the most commonly used and not necessarily the URL. Yeah. So even if you got the UR, DOI or the URL number, whichever, so you just go and you find the book that's there. I just wanted to give you one quick example so you see how this works. Uh, must be it. Okay, here we go. ISBN number. Oh, this is going to be, I don't know how I'm going to get this here. Let me try and move this aside. Sorry, you can all see this here. This is the yes, number sir. I'm, this is the number I'm, I'm typing in. Okay. This is the number that I'm using here. Okay. I'm just going to move this off screen so you can see that. Uh, and I hope I can see this number now. Uh, now here I will go in, I'll punch in. Nine seven eight nine seven eight uh, zero nineteen zero nineteen oh two three seven two seven oh two three seven two seven oh two three seven two seven one I think it's okay so now there I go I'm not going to say go and search. Right, there we go. It's found the book for me. Conflict in Ukraine, is it? That's the book? Yes. Okay, see, I've got the book already. Now, the title of this guy is, what well, is it? Conflict in Ukraine. This is by Jekyll, whatever his name is. All right, so I started to say to cite it here and say, who... So and so, I want to get the citation here. Yeah. Jekyll is the guy. Jekyll is the guy's name. Okay. I'm so, uh, I managed to get quite a few of um, the 
manager of um, Orchard Quarry and person manager. Sorry, I can't, it's not picking it up. I might have to refresh this. Okay, it'll pick it up anyway. And then it brings it in and automatically it updated your bibliography. There you go. This is not Jekyll, but it's somebody else, but that's it. It's just to show you how it's done. There you go. The reference is there and the bibliography is there. All clear? Yes. And then sure. um, I think one last question. Um, sure. the, rest are, the rest are really just uh, compliments. But one last question is in relation to the talk you gave on MVivo, on whether MVivo is suitable for doing a scoping review. Uh, scoping reviews, you're going to have to ask uh, Colleen Aldous about. Yeah, I'm just going to have very... um, yeah. I think I can answer that because that's also my, my thing. Um, it is it is suitable, but I think you also have to know how to use it. I use it myself, and I think it's user friendly. But you do have to take a bit of time and uh, learn a bit of it, and then also know what it is that you're looking for in every article that you want. But once you have categorized everything that you want according to the notes, and you can play around with the data and find relations between your data map patterns and all those things. So I would recommend it any day. Right, great, yeah. Uh, okay. And Vivo is and Vivo is great. I, I use it all the time, you know, for yes. content analysis. It, it it works well. Look, you, I can do a whole session on Vivo, but not me. Lots of people know. <laughs> it. I'm not the only one. I just I I just love working with the technology. It's it's fun for me to work around it. And I, as yeah. you can see, I enjoy working with it. It makes my life very easy. Because I'm yeah. not the kind of person to go on all these nitpicky little commas and full stops and brackets and years and publishing date and publish. I can't deal with all that stuff. That's just too much for me. I want to get on with the actual <laughs> thinking of the article. So these of are all course. the mundane. And so I think they're good. Yeah. I, hope, yeah. I hope you have benefited from this employee. Uh, yes, so. there's very good feedback um, in the in the comment section. And just to remind everyone, the presentation will be available on YouTube. Um, I think the link will be provided as soon as it is up, uploaded. Um, as for, I don't know, Prof, do you interact with the YouTube um, channel on maybe if people want to continue to ask questions and interact with the video once it's been updated? Once no, it's no, uploaded? sure. Yeah, I'm available. So feel free, those of you who are working here, you know, uh, we work in a network of scholars. So feel free to ask me anytime. You know, anything that you want to know, just feel free. Drop me an email, or if you want, if you want a development, if you feel, hey, look, man, we like the Zotero. Please, you only yes. gave us the starter. All that you did was give us the starters, the hors d'oeuvres. We now want the yes. main course. You know, come and show us. Take like these are the things we want. How do I cite this? How do I cite that? How do I look for referencing? How do I alter this? We can do a session like that. This is just to give you an overview to say, well, here's what you can do. So life is not so difficult after all. We are here to make your life a bit easier. So that's that's the that's the thing. So I think that's important for you. Yes. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you for a great presentation. And okay. um, yeah, I think I will also visit Zotero because I don't use it. I also use EndNote like a lot of other people, but I think it's very user friendly, especially um, even for people who are not necessarily um, uh, working like for an institution, the fact that it's free for everyone makes it even a better choice. So thank you very much. And um, let's see, there are people who ask that you share your email address. Maybe if you can um, just type your email yeah, address in the chat. Yeah. Yes, it's on the it's, it's on the on the slideshow. Oh, oh yes. Maybe we yeah. can just go to the very first. And yeah. um, for people who went the MVivo, I did do a presentation on MVivo, I think last year and the year before. Uh, depending on um, this year's program, I will see whether there will be an opportunity for me to present again. I will um, talk to Prof. Colleen first and see, and maybe I will present on it. But um, since I don't see any more questions or the link to the YouTube, I think you can just go to YouTube and, and search for UKZN. Um, there are a whole lot of, of videos there. Um, okay, I think we have covered 
all the questions and prof thank you so much i think um on behalf of everyone else who attended we still have quite a lot of people here on behalf of everyone who attended thank you for sharing your knowledge we really appreciate it always welcome thank you boy okay bye bye all right bye bye